at night, huh? No, oh, we usually get too much or not enough. Nick, that kitchen ceiling is leaking like a sieve. I thought you fixed it. I did, but I wasn't expecting this kind of weather. Come on, Heath, let's take a look at it. I'll get it. Frank, come in. Come in. Get that coat off. I'll get you some hot coffee. Oh, I haven't time, Sparkly. We got serious trouble. I need your help. What is it, Frank? That earth dam up at Vineyard Lake. Those rain's been working on it. There's a good chance the whole shebang might let go. That dam breaks. The whole valley's going to be flooded. What do you want us to do, Frank? Well, I got men sandbagged in the dam now. If you could give them any help. Every man we got will be there in an hour, Frank. Heath, you go see if you can find Jared. I'll round up the rest of the men. Just hold on. I'd like one of you to over to Salt Springs. I had the place evacuated last night, but there's people who wouldn't be above loot in a deserted town. I got three men there now, but I don't know them. I need somebody I can count on. Well, I'll go. Never did care much for carrying sandbags. All right. Uh, he. We ought to know whether or not that dam's gonna hold by sundown tomorrow night. You keep an eye out toward the dam about then. If it looks okay, I'll fire off two skyrockets. But if I shoot off only one rocket, yeah, well, I think I can figure that one out for myself. I'll get my gear. Well, uh, we'll get Jared. Frank, Salt Springs is right at the base of the dam, isn't it? Yeah, that's so. If the dam goes, how much of a chance will he have? I won't lie to you, Miss Barkley. If that boy's in Salt Springs and the dam lets go, well, I'd say he'd better have himself a real fast horse. Maybe an ark. scared us half to death. Hey, Leon, this is the one the sheriff told us about. I'm Cody Grell. This here's my brother, Leon. Nice meeting you. Come on inside, meet old Buster. like they left every bit of the free lunch. You want something? No, thanks. How about a beer? It tastes good. Sheriff sent Barkley to give us a hand protecting things. Looks like the free lunch is in good hands anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we've been doing so far. Now, one of us has been making rounds every half hour, been trading off turns. You want to get some sleep? There's a room in the back. Sounds like everything's under control. Well, I ain't too much to walking around an empty town. Um, anything new up at the dam? Well, they'll know something by tonight. Two skyrockets means good. One skyrocket means good. Well, we, we didn't unsaddle our horses, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, if uh, you want us to ride out now, you won't get any argument from me. Leon, a sheriff asked us personal to do a job for him. He asked for volunteers, and you were the only one who stuck his hand up, and that's the truth of that. My brother is real civic-minded. Leon, we've been through all this before. Leave it go, please. <laughs> See, uh, my brother don't quite understand what I'm trying to do by... When that dam lets fly, we're going to be the ones blowing bubbles. None of those respectable people that you keep drooling over. Leon. Don't pay no attention to them two wrangling each other. They do it all the time. <laughs> Sounds like you fellas work together. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got a claim just outside of town. We ain't found nothing yet. <laughs> well, we will. You mark my word. I've been telling him and his brother both. This land is just plumb full of gold. I know. I've been at it for years around here. Now, you never told us how come you ain't got anything yet. Well, that's on account of 
Some people are supposed to get their reward early, and, and some of them get it late. But the Lord will take care of me. Don't you worry. He's not going to let old Buster down. You'll see. <laughs> How about you, Barkley? You a uh, ranch hand or what? He ain't a ranch hand with a fine gun like that. Hey, mind if I take a look at that? Oh, Leon purely admires a good handgun. Yeah. You know, I have myself lots of rifles, but I've never had myself a good handgun. Glad you like it. But it's just a working man's gun. Our family's got a spread up around Stockton. Hey, are you one of them, Barclays? His family's got half this valley in the bank vault. That's what I've been told. <laughs> well, I wouldn't believe everything I heard. Oh. When's the last time anybody looked around? Oh, I was out a while back. It's quiet as a tomb out there. Well, I guess it's my turn, huh? <laughs> Leon, just my need that. Oh, uh, we'll put your uh, horse in the livery stable with ours. Good enough. Hey, hurry back and I'll buy you another beer. On the house. <laughs> I'll do that. Good. I have one myself. Leon, don't you know nothing about how to act around people? I didn't do nothing. But you didn't try to be too friendly, neither. Now, you know why I told the sheriff we were going to help him out. So his people wouldn't think we're just stray dogs. So his people would know that we want to have a stake in this town. Whew. Boy, they squeezed the juices out of you. We don't own anything in this town, and yet we're guarding it. Now, you tell me how that makes any sense at all. It makes people respect us. There ain't nothing more important than that. There's only one thing people respect, and that's money. And ain't none of your ideas gotten any of that yet. I swear, you two at it again. <laughs> well, you know what they say, Buster. Never interfere in a fight between two brothers. <laughs> you want a beer, uh, Cody? You got the wrong room. I sure did get the wrong room. Come on, on your way before I call the manager. You better have a loud voice. What is that supposed to mean? Manager's 20 miles away. Yeah? Well, I'm little Bo Peep. <laughs> Look, lady, I don't know what you're doing here, but... This is my room. That's what I'm doing here. Because this whole town has been evacuated. Evacuated? <laughs> Come on, honey. <laughs> Take a look. It's all right, honey. I ain't going anywhere.
kidding, were you? How come? Rain weakened the dam up in the foothills. It goes, so does the town. <laughs> well, say, old girl, you sure can pick them, can't you? <sighs> 10,000 Salt Lake towns in this country, and you pick this one. Oh, I'm uh, Faye Kelly, by the way. He's Berkeley. Why didn't you leave with the others? Well, I was probably too drunk to hear him. She's probably too scared to let him in. Poor little thing. They probably knocked and yelled and nobody answered. They figured we'd gone. Well, we better get you out of here. Now, look, I'm just trying to be friendly. Doesn't she understand English? Not when it comes angry. I found her when I was singing in a saloon. She was swabbing out the place. Taking a lot of guff from the drovers that come through. Well, it didn't seem right, so now she travels with me. <laughs> Which is a big improvement. Her tribe uh, kicked her out. They, uh, they think she's cursed. She can't talk. Barkley! Barkley! Barkley, where are you? Barkley! Barkley! What is it, Buster? We did it! We did it! Did what? We caught one. We caught us a real live looter. That's what we done. A real live one, too. Can you imagine that? We caught a looter. That's hard to do, too, you know. <laughs> Lady, when I get back, you better be packed up, sobered up, and ready to get out. It was real swell meeting you, too. <laughs> Pretty fancy rig for a cowboy, Mr. Cannon. There's nothing wrong with that. Look, I was just passing through. Is that a crime? From what I hear, Cannon, you were passing through a few stores. Ran out of tin beef on the trail. Thought I'd pick some up. It's a mighty handsome coat. I'm glad you like it. What'd you buy? I didn't. I won it in a car game. Where? El Paso, about... Uh, Two or three months ago. And you've been walking around for two or three months with a price tag still on it. <laughs> Always did have a bad memory. Well, you'll have time to remember a few things in the Stockton jail. Oh, you can't hold me. You aren't law, man. Oh, yes, we are. Duly sworn in. All of us. The law must be getting pretty hard up. Hey, listen, mister, you just button up your lip. Leon, our job's just holding him for the sheriff. Besides, he's not the only problem we've got. There's two women over at the hotel. I got left behind somehow. Are they good looking? I gotta go over and get them packed up and moved in over here. Hey, Barkley. Whose horse? What do you mean? The way I count, five people here and the five horses. Now, whose horse are those women gonna take? He's right. You can't get away from a flood on foot, Barkley. I'll take my horse. Then somebody's gonna have to ride double. Can't make any time that way. I ain't riding double with nobody. Mm. <laughs> well, guess who his riding partner's gonna be? Satisfied? I just want to find out uh, what the arrangements are gonna be, that's all. Now you know. Boys, I don't know why you're so anxious to get out of here. You got whiskey, food, and women. There's nothing wrong with that setup. Mister, what we're doing here is upholding the law. Sure. Sure. I told you, Angel, I ain't going anywhere. Well, look, will you just get dressed? In a few hours, this whole town may be underwater. No great loss from what I can see. Well, why? Just tell me why you want to stay. I never saw a flood before. Oh, can't you understand that this is serious? All right, I'll be serious. In the first place, an elephant sitting on a footstool couldn't have a bigger hangover than I got right now. In the second place, I got a roof and some food, which is more than I got over the next hill. And if that dam breaks? Yeah, that's the third thing. If the dam breaks, what are you going to do? Leave the girl and me here? Oh, no, you wouldn't do that, would you? No. 
Well, what else are you going to do? Tie us both on the back of a horse and slap his rump? Hope he takes us to high ground? No. Admit it, Angel. We're staying. And besides, I uh, told you before, I ain't never seen a flood before. All right. All right, but you're moving in closer with us. And the saloon is our headquarters. All right, Angel. But I ain't going to no saloon headquarters in this rag. Your boss sure is taking his time with those women. He ain't our boss. It looked like he was the one giving the orders. We're all in this equal. Yeah. You rich guys sure do stick together. <laughs> you think we're rich? You mean you aren't? Well, that is absolutely amazing. How come you thought we was rich? Because the real name of this town is Temptation. Oh, that's enough of that kind of talk. Oh, let him go on and talk. What's going to hurt for him to talk? We're here to guard this town. That's what we're going to do. Well, who said anything different? I was just giving you boys a lot of credit at all. There ain't many regular folks. Poor, I mean, like all of us. Not many could just stand around and leave things be. We just don't happen to think stealing is right. But this ain't stealing. How do you figure that? Yeah, how do you figure that? You mind if I have a drink? Ah, uh, sure. Well, it seems to me when a man steals, he knows he might get caught. There ain't no way a man could get caught here. You see, I figure a man could take a few wagons, and load them up with, uh, well, whatever struck his fancy, then ride on out a few miles and wait. For what? Well, if that damn bus it keeps right on going, this whole town will be underwater. No one would know a thing had been taken. <laughs> yeah? What happens if that damn dope bust? Yeah. Well, then he rides back here. And all the folks will call him a hero for doing his best to save their precious, lifelong possessions. Be hard for man to lose, no matter what happened. I don't mean to sound like I know it all. I'm just a cowboy passing through. Like you said, you know that, don't you? It ain't right to steal. Well, how about that time in Carson City? We were starving and we wanted food. That's different. Well, I bet you the owner of that store wouldn't think so. Now, look. Mom made me promise never to fight you on things. I never done it. Even when we threw in with old Buster, I stuck with you. I was up before dawn. I was down in that mine with you. In that black hole at 8 or 9 o'clock at night, I remember times trying to remember what the sun looked like. All the time you was telling me how good things were going to be, and how uh, respected we was going to be when we hit that rich vein. Well, we hit it today, Cody. Huh? I don't want to ever hear you talk like that again. Uh-huh. Because you know it's true. Because it is true. <laughs> I didn't realize that she was so tempted, Cody.
Kelly. Howdy. How there. Who's your friend? Never mind, Leon. Where's that spare room? In the back. A couple of cots in there. Ain't no blankets or nothing. She's an Indian, ain't she? That's right. Take this. Go down to the dry goods store and pick up some blankets and anything else you might need. Angel, the town's deserted. Who am I supposed to give this to? Well, nobody. Just leave it on the counter. <laughs> you sure are a unicorn. <laughs> you know, that thing looks like a horse with a horn. A fellow once told me that horn represented honesty, which is swell, if you happen to believe in unicorns. Well, come on, honey. Honest John wants to throw some money away. Boys? Hey, General. I thought you was going to get rid of those women. Easier said than done. It don't bother me none. That squaw's a pretty little thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't talk about the squaw like that, Buster. You'll get the man mad. After all, rank does have its privileges. I'd take it a little easier on that stuff, Leon. I've gotten along without your advice for 28 years. You just leave off. And I said take it easy. Now I've got enough problems around here without you getting drunk. You got more problems you know about, Barkley. Show the man who you're with, Buster. Drop your gun belt, mister. patience, so let's hear it. Cody, I told you the truth. People only respect money. Now it makes a man walk proud. Cody, give us a chance. We're wasting time here. Let's get them. Sensible about this? I hadn't planned on it. We're coming in.
can't hold out, Barkley. We've got you outnumbered and outgunned. Yeah, you got it all. Everything except the horses. He's right about the horses. We're stuck, Cannon. So is he. Tell you what, let's start hitting those stores. We've got about three hours between now and sundown to make a collection. Collection? That's some word. Don't waste time on anything cheap. We'll find another wagon on the street. Dump everything in there. Won't do us no good. We can't get out of town. We'll get the horses later. How? You don't expect me to go charge in that stable? He'd burn us down like dry grass. He can't shoot what he can't see. When it's dark, the four of us rush the place. Shouldn't be any trouble. Gonna kill him? If he puts up a fight, that's only self-defense. How about the two women? Yeah, killing women. I won't have no part of that. Neither would I, so don't worry about it. You two boys get started. I'll tell Buster. Cody, come on. Come on! <laughs> the door. I figure the other three have started looting. How do you know they're not sneaking around in back figuring to set this place on fire? No, not with the horses in here. Oh, well, I'll have that carved on my tombstone. They didn't burn her up because they didn't want to hurt the horses. <laughs> Thanks, friends. Well, you had your chance to get out. You should have taken it. Oh, my chance. Let me tell you something about little old Faye. I can sing a pretty mean song and uh, tell a barrel full of jokes. So this fella, Harry Cole, he, uh, Convinced me that all I needed was his help to make me a big star. And uh, he helped me all right, taking my money through the three years we was married. Then he uh, took off for Alaska with a waitress. And uh, that's the way it's gone for little old Faye. Looking for unicorns and getting kicked in the head and then drinking to get rid of the pain. I know I had my chance, Angel. You was worried whether I'd drown in a flood. I was wondering whether it'd even matter or not. This wall connects to the building next door. If I can get through here, maybe I can get out that way to get some ammunition. Cody, take a look at that. Ain't that something? Huh? That's uh, just like Billy the Kid. <laughs> hey, right. Let's get you something now. Let's see, what'll it be? There you go. There, now, Big Cody's got himself a hat. How about that? It's going to be all right, you'll see. Come on, we got lots to get still. Come on. Yeah. 
enemy. prayer. <laughs> Don't mind me. <sighs> them men out there. You see them in every saloon. Usually they're fighting to buy me a beer or walk me back to the hotel. It doesn't seem natural them trying to kill me don't seem right at all. You know something? Maybe you were cursed. Maybe it was both cursed. You don't understand me at all, do you? I don't understand myself, especially now. I, I want to laugh. I want to cry. I, mostly, I just want to pray. Not a peep out of me. I've been thinking about that surprise him in the dark idea, and I ain't fond of it. There's a better way. I'll listen. See that crack in them boards? Yeah. Why don't I just slip over there and drop a little fire in her? No, no, we don't want to burn the horses. And neither does he. And when he comes out there to tromp out that fire, he'll be right in my sights and bam! <laughs> Buster? You're a crafty old coot. <laughs> got Buster. He let go right through the wall. Don't be afraid. I think I'll go finish putting our little collection in the wagon. You two stay here. Keep your eyes open. Still out 
there. Yeah, they're still there. How you doing? I felt better. No answer. Well, that wasn't the brightest question I've ever heard. My best petticoat. I hope you're honored. Sure am. Tell me something, Barkley. Why are you doing all this? Huh? You never saw the girl of me till this morning. You live in another town. Even if you save the whole kit and caboodle, the dam's liable to bust. Nobody ever know what you've done. Doesn't make much sense. I guess not. Then? Why? It's hard to say. Never tried to figure it out. One time I was riding up in the high country above the timberline. And I got lost. And then I found a trail marker. Kind of set me straight. The point is, I don't know who put up that marker. But I know if he were here today, he'd be the kind of man that'd be fighting on our side. Where do you think you're going? We still need that ammunition. Well, you're not going to be any help to anybody if you go out there and bleed to death. She's the only person here who's got half a chance. Give me a bullet. No. There's no other way, Angel. Rifle. See this, Angel? You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? See if you can get some more just like it at the hardware store. You can do it, can't you, honey? It's wrong what we're doing. We'll never get away with it. The law ain't ever gonna know about this. We'll know, won't we? We already stole. Can't change that. But we ain't killed, Leon. We ain't done that. What, are you scared? Yeah. I'm not of getting killed. I'm scared of the way we're gonna have to live once we go through with this thing. But we've done too much to back out now. We're gonna see this thing through. I was just talking. What's the matter with you? It's time. Cody, you stay here. When I whistle, you start shooting through that front door. That ought to get his attention. Then Leon and me will bust through the side door. Right. Make sure you aim high so you don't hit the horses. Come on, Leon. When your brother starts shooting, you follow me. You get a chance to break in that shiny new gun.
That damn for a signal. Two skyrockets means you stick tight. One skyrocket, you hightail it out of here and don't stop for nothing. Angel? I think I'm starting to believe in unicorns again. See ya. in the hardware store getting shells. How'd you get out? You hear me? Oh, she can't talk, I don't think. Is Barkley out of that stable? Just nod your head, yes or no. You go on back and check that hardware store again. Barkley knows we got the girl. If he wants those shells, he'll have to get her himself. I'll take care of her. Easy, Squaw. You ain't going nowhere. made my share a lot bigger, Mr. Barkley. I'll say one thing for you. You didn't give up. You hung on like a terrier. It pains me to kill you. Won the good handgun, didn't you? What am I going to tell Mama? What am I going to tell Mama? Angel, 
I only counted one skyrocket. Yeah. We better get moving. <clears throat> Well, what do you know? Maybe little old Faye's luck's beginning to change. I've got it all. I'm up on top. I feel the music and I never want to stop. So much to cheer about and fill my cup. The world and I are on the up and up. And suddenly my heart is mountain tall. I found my lava and now I got it all. <laughs> more, more, sing another song. Thank you, Kathy. But I better get down to the music hall after you spend so much time trying to get me on the bill. I better show up on time. We'll be in to see you. Oh, fine. Just uh, make it before the Temperance Club finds out about me. But who knows? Maybe not anymore. Well, I'll uh, get the bags off of the rig. Oh, thank you, Angel. Gee, I sure hate to leave here. I haven't been in a place with so many handsome men since. I'll, uh, I'll tell you that story sometime. Well, Angel, it was. I won't say fun, because that makes you laugh, but I will say good, because that makes you strong. Bye. Eve, are you sure you told us everything that went on in that town? Well, sis, I thought I did. But I guess sometimes you just don't know everything that's going on. time you think we have? At best, maybe four or five days, Mr. Barkley. Are you sure you can't do anything more with that pump? I'm positive. You don't get another one in here, you can write this mine off. Well, wait a minute, the Dunavant mine has a pump. They're using it. Lucky Star's got one coming up from San Francisco, but they don't figure it'll get here for another ten weeks. Mr. Barkley? Oh, Jared, any luck? Yeah, I found out they're auctioning off the pump over at Sally Rosa. Now, Peterson says it's big enough to do the job if we can get it here in time. We'll get it here. How much money does it cost? Five thousand dollars, minimum bid. But cash? Oh. It's a government bankruptcy sale, and they won't accept a bank draft without holding the merchandise until it clears. That holds up two or three weeks. Well, that's too late, Mr. Barkley. I know. And no, 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 wait a minute. Anyone else trying for it? No. All we have to have is the cash. Well, then we'll just have to get the cash. That's not so easy, Nick. It's a weekend. Oh. But I figured we could telegraph Heath at home. Now, he could go into Stockton and dig up the cash somehow. And if he really pushes, he could meet us in Sala Rosa in time for the sale. Well, what are you waiting now? Why don't you get going? Keep your feet dry. Now, <laughs> yeah, thanks. You bet I have. Nice and chill. Just right for the picnic. Good enough. Beats me where you get the muscle. From playing the pipes, boy. Say, have you heard from your brothers? Not a word. Spare a little? <laughs> What's the big occasion? Oh, a poker game. And a bloody one. Who's playing? Well, Lee Martinson. His spider Martinson. Local talisman tried to take him. Professional? 
I'm not sure. But I'll tell you this, he's too good for them fellas. Say, why don't you take him on? <laughs> That'll be the day. King, I, up. I'll give you a hand with the keg. Wait a minute. Isn't that Jack Carpenter playing? Yeah. I'll get it in a minute. What's it to me? Two dollars. That is, if you want to play. I'll give you a marker. Sure you're good for the two dollars? Listen, you... You work around here? No. Maybe you own a few thousand acres of land? Are you making fun of me, mister? No. Just trying to find out whether you're good for two dollars. Anyone here can vouch for this man? No. No job, no money in the bank. Maybe you own a gold mine or a gold watch. I'll take any kind of collateral at all, mister. No collateral, no game. Anybody here wants to lend you two dollars, see you through this pot, you're in. If not, you're holding up the game. Let's see, that's two dollars to me, and I'll raise it five. you five more. Up another five. Call. What do you got? Two pair. King's high. It's your pot. Thanks for the game. We're only just beginning, Mr. Carpenter. Now that the pikers are out, why don't you and I play a little real poker? I've had enough. Anybody else want to play? Heath, he's too sharp for me anyway, but you're the best poker player in town. Whiskey. I'd like to play with the best poker player in town. Maybe some other time. No, no, wait, please. Don't sit down, mister. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. Where's my... Clumsy, stupid... Right. Get some place we can play? In the back. Grab yourself some feet. Nasty bump on the head, lad. I'd better send for a doctor. Don't worry, the doctor will be here soon. Why don't you sit down? He treats you that way all the time? No, not all the time. Do you have a good doctor here? Sure do. And banged heads are especially. Where are you from? Moria. Where's that? It's an island near Tahiti. I don't think I've heard of it. It has a reef, and you can hear the surf pounding on it all over the island. There are butterflies, and the beaches are black with black sand. There is a mountain in the center of the island with clouds around it in a circle. It is called La Cujon. Sounds nice. Yes. And it smells good, too. There are Chari Tahiti going all over the island. Chari. That's my name. Chari Fahre. I'm Heath Barkley. Morris, he said it was an emergency. Well, I'm waiting for a baby to be born. You're lucky. If he'd hit his head an inch more to the right, the sheriff would be here instead of me. He was slapping the girl around. 
He has the right to. Nobody has that right. You're wrong. I belong to him. You mean you're his wife? No. He bought me. I'm his property. <laughs> He's coming, too. Might be a good idea if he doesn't see you. How is he? He's coming around. Uh, it's good. I can't stand to have anybody dying on my property. You know, it's against my policy, but I'm about to buy a drink on the house. Oh, Mrs. Barkley. Piper. Good day to you, ma'am. Keith, I'm glad I caught you before you left. This came for you. There's trouble at the mine. I say there's trouble. It's flooding. Where are we going to get $5,000 with the banks all closed? Well, that's the other reason I came. Piper, we need $5,000. $5,000? Now, where would I be getting that kind of money? You get it out of your safe. Safe? Are you? What safe? Oh, Piper, you've been in the loan business that I know of for the past five years. How much interest are you charging now? 15%? 20%? Now, what a thing to say. Piper, we need $5,000 now. But it would take away my working capital for the weekend. Suppose I get a run at the faro table. Sell some more beer. I'm sorry, Mrs. Barkley. There's nobody on earth I'd rather help than you, but I just... Piper, do you remember how we first met? <laughs> well, I don't think I know to what you're referring. Well, let me refresh your memory. When you first came to town, you needed money to buy this place. All right. See, you lent me a little money. A little? Well, maybe $1,500 doesn't seem a lot to you now, but it was a matter of life or death then, wasn't it? $5,000. Five thousand dollars. All right. I'll sell a little more beer. I checked. There's a train leaving in a few hours. It connects with the stage to Sally Rosa. Here's a change of clothes and your razor. Well, if I don't get there in time, I'll know what to do with the razor. <laughs> now, just take it easy. You'll be all right after a little rest. Yeah, thanks. Well, I must be off. But if you have any headaches or anything tomorrow, uh, you might stop by my office. Keep your hands off. What's the matter hit me? Here you are, Mrs. Barkley, 5,000. Uh, do you want to count? Oh, that won't be necessary. I'll have the bank repay you first thing Monday morning. Uh, plus interest. Uh, yes, ma'am. How about dinner before I catch the train? Good. We'll go to the hotel. I understand they have nice, fresh lobster. Get our stuff ready. We've got a train to catch. But the doctor said you should rest. The doctor doesn't know what's on that train with me. I wouldn't miss it if I had a broken leg. Barkley, I wish to apologize for my behavior at our previous meeting. It's all right. I was forgotten. No, no. Our boorish conduct is never really forgotten. It's merely excused. And that's the most I have the right to expect of you. How's your head? Better. You mind if we join you? Sit down, Thierry. I'll be right back. I'm going to scut up some cigars. train goes so fast. 30 miles an hour. It beats walking. 
In Morea, if we were going this fast, we would soon find ourselves in the sea, swimming. In water so blue, so clear. What's the name of that place again? Morea? You miss it, don't you? Is your family there? Yes. All my fathers and all my mothers. All your fathers and mothers? Our ways are different from yours. When we are young, we have many fathers and many mothers. It's like an uncle is a father and an aunt is a mother. And one has many uncles and many aunts. And in every house, you're welcome. It's like having a family of many families. Where did you meet Martinson? My first father took me to Fiji two years ago. But he fell sick and died. And I had no way to go back to Tahiti. Martinson was working there. And when he went away, I went away with him. But not to Tahiti? No. Not to Tahiti. Care for a drink? No, thanks. Cigar? No. Find out when the club car opens. Paid fifty dollars for her in Fiji. Worth every cent of it. Why haven't you noticed? I'll give you a hundred. Oh, she's not for sale. Not yet, anyway. I don't want her for myself. Then why buy her? To send her home. I'll send her home myself in due time. So, you're the best poker player in Stockton. People exaggerate. Sometimes. Might try a few hands, find out. Poker's a passion with me. No, thanks. Didn't think you'd scare out. I don't. Then how about it? You will. Sooner or later, you will. Sally Rosa. Well, this is where I get off. This is where we get off. I didn't mention you were going to Sally Rosa. You didn't ask. Yes, Mr. Barkley, you're going to be sharing the pleasure of our company. Isn't he, Tiare? I'll get that. Thank you, Mr. Barkley. Well, we mustn't spoil her. She's frightened. I told her about the Indian massacre here, and she's been having nightmares ever since. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that. No one's seen an unfriendly Indian in these parts for more than a year. Besides which, Mr. Barclay's a crack shot. He'll defend your honor, your scalp, and his $5,000. Come to think of it, better off losing that money to me than turning it over to those savages. You seem to be well informed. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Barclay. I won't steal it from you. And you won't win it either. All right, folks. Everybody out. 
Dry wells. Miguel. Miguel. Say, si, senor. How about some food? If you want me to change the horses, I can get the food. I'll change the horses. Then I'll get the food. Good. Today we have tamale pie. And tomorrow, too. Uh, por favor, siéntense. Uh, please sit down. Gracias. Uh, must have left my cigars on the stage. Excuse me. I got my cigar. So, well, we're gonna have to ride the horse back to the station. Be another coach along in the morning. That's too late. I gotta be in Sally Rosa tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's all right, Mr. Barkley. You're welcome to one of the horses. Appreciate it. Oh, we'll be going along with Mr. Barkley. I have urgent business in Sally Rosa, too. Mister, with a little lady there, it's 40 miles from here. You'll have to bunk down tonight. Food is nothing but what you can catch. You know, that station ain't much, but it's bound to be more comfortable. Thanks, but uh, we'll keep Mr. Barkley company. That is, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Well, take what you want from your baggage. The rest will arrive by stage. We've got a few extra blankets if you need them. Well, it ain't gonna be no joyride. farther. 20, 25 miles. What time is your auction? Auction's at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but I figure we can make Sally Rosa easy by noon. I'm sorry. Riding 20 miles without a saddle, you must be pretty tired. A little bit. Martinson, tie up those horses. Gather up some firewood. I'm gonna see if I can scout up some dinner. Aye, aye, sir. But, uh, just give me one moment, please. What's that for? Coffee. Go on, fill this up. We don't have any coffee. Man said take what you need from your baggage. Never travel without coffee, my own special blend. 
Go on, Terry. But the stream is so far away. That's two, three hundred yards back there. Go on, get going. W what if... Well, if any Indians show up, just invite them over for coffee. Martinson, you want your canteen filled up, you fill it up. All right, Barkley. You're in charge here. Well, if you're so scared, why don't you go along with him? She's going to stay right here and just rest. Is that all right? Well, I don't hold with it. man treats you like a princess, you might wish he was your master. But I guess I'll just have to grin and bear it. Try to bring back a nice plump partridge, Barkley. I'll do that. Not exactly partridge, but uh, close, Barkley. Darn close. Hmm. You eat much better in the wilderness than I expected. How'd you get them? Good luck. Well, now, you really feel lucky. Uh, how about a little, uh, not that lucky? All right. You didn't have to run down some apple pie for the coffee, did you? Sorry. And here I was about to dub you the perfect Western male. All right. I'll dub you uh, Sir Heath, the almost perfect Western male. It gives me something to shoot for. You know, Renaissance man made a virtue of thought. You people have made a virtue of self-sufficiency. Well, if we don't, we die. I know. And that's the most interesting thing of all. You know, I make my living by finding and knowing weaknesses in other men. You know, the one of the few I've ever met who doesn't seem to have any. Now, you don't seem to be concerned with any of the seven deadly sins. Yet, like all men, you must be vulnerable to something. Tell me, Barkley, what do you think your Achilles heel might be? Well, I get cold when the temperature drops below freezing. And it's dropping pretty fast right now. Better get some firewood. Oh, no, please, allow me. You young people, uh, amuse yourselves. Well, we could do the dishes if we had any. <laughs> You're not like anyone I've ever met. Well, I don't know whether that's a compliment or not, but thank you. Martinson says you're very rich. Rich? I guess you could say I'm rich. I got people that love me, people I love, a nice home, and I like my work. I guess you could say I'm rich. Yes. People who love you. That makes you very rich. You'll go back to your family one day. I'm sure. These people who love you. One of them is a girl, is she not? One of them? Yes. A man such as you must have many girls. Are they prettier than me? Well, let's see. There's, there's Jennifer. She's very fair and very different from you. But prettier? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing about Jennifer. She's not afraid of Indians. I'm not afraid of Indians. No? No. Well, you sure could have fooled me. Well, maybe a little bit. But not when you're here. Not now.
Didn't strain yourself, did you? Well, it's pretty dark back there. Maybe we could bundle together, share some of our body warmth. Wanna go get some more firewood? Now, for a minute there, I thought you and our young hero, Barkley, uh... Why didn't you let him kiss you? Why are you doing this? Doing what? Pushing you at him? Yes. Tiare, do you know what an Achilles heel is? No. Now you will, my sweet. You will. Mr. Barkley, and we'll go as nice and quiet as we come, with nobody hurt. Don't make any quick moves, Mr. Barkley. There's another gun looking down your back. Just hand me the money, nice and easy. chance. Why? Well, I didn't come all this way to see you lose that $5,000 to a couple of tin horn bandits. Thanks, Martinson. But if you think I owe you that poker game, you're wrong. I thought you might be the kind of man who'd repay one favor with another. But no matter. Like every good poker player, I may still have myself an ace in the hole. Understand the stage broke down. Mr. Beamer don't like to be kept waiting unless he got a mighty good excuse. Yes, I know. Mr. Thurman, this is Mr. Barkley. You've met Tiari. Let's get going, like I said. I know, I know. Mr. Beamer hates to be kept waiting. Well, he's just gonna have to wait a little while longer, at least until I've had a bath. I got a short bath, Martinson. Don't push your luck. Well, I guess I'd better get a receipt for these horses. Well, goodbye, Mr. Barkley. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Tiari. Tiari. I said, inside! I'm sorry, but there's no time left. You're my only chance. You, you're his Achilles heel. You, Tiari. My only hope is you. Did he beat you? 
Well, you're going to leave him now. No. I'm going to put you on a stage for San Francisco. No. But you can't stay with him. But I can't leave him. I told you that. I'm his property. Where is he? I don't want you to fight. I don't intend to. Is he in his room? He went to the saloon. You go back in the hotel lobby and wait for me. It'll be all right, I promise. Not getting up, Barkley. So you might just as well sit down. I'll buy her. Sit down and play. Three hundred. Nope. Name it. Five thousand. You rotten excuse for a. All right. I'll get it for you. Now. I need it now. I can't give you that money. You can't give it to me, but we can play for it. I told you once you'd play cards with me. If you beat me, she's yours. I'll put up Tiare for $5,000 worth of chips. Tomorrow. Hold off to tomorrow. There's no tomorrow, not for me, Barkley. If you want her, you'll play for her. And right now, you've got yourself a game. Call. Seven. Four. Hundred dollars. Up a hundred. Call. Six. Pair of fours, that's a hundred. Make it two. A call. Pair of sevens. dollars a look three fours oh, that was quick and easy Try again. Deal. Deal. Jack Bitts. Worth every cent of five thousand dollars, huh? It's your bet. You think I should have let us starve in Fiji? Bet. Jack bets a hundred. Call. Deuce. Ten. Jack bets. 
One hundred dollars. Raise your hundred. Call. Nine. Pair of tens. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Pay a deuces. Queen, steal my bet. So go ahead. Bet. Five hundred dollars. Your five hundred dollars. And another hundred. Your hundred dollars. Up five hundred dollars. Five hundred. Up another hundred. Call. Two pair. Jackson deuces. Never bet when you're angry. Three hundred dollars. Call. Fair five. Deuce. Five's bet. I'll bet the rest of it. Five hundred dollars. I'll see that. Three fives. Oh, yeah. that's good enough. Maybe your luck has changed. Maybe it has. Deal. <laughs> Your name Gorman? That's right, Len Gorman. Jared Barkley. This is my brother Nick. How you doing? Nice meeting you. Got your telegraph. The pump goes up for sale first. Go on inside. We'll be starting things right on the dot. And just a minute. You wouldn't know offhand if our brother Heath Barkley's shown up. No, sir. Anybody who's showed up so far is local. Yeah, well, don't worry, Nick. He'll be here soon. Let's go inside and check that pump. Yeah. Let's see. That's, uh... 500. And 500 more. Well, I'll just see your 500. What do you have? Full house. Kings. Good hand. Darn good. Four deuces. Sweet. 
you stay with him. He won you fair and square. You stay with him. You in a hurry, Martinson? I thought I'd save you a little trip out to the ranch. You were coming out to the ranch, weren't you? I haven't got the money, Beamer. Oh? Well, that's a pity for you, that is. Because I'd much rather have the girl. So would you, wouldn't you? I haven't got the girl either. Oh. Well, that's even more of a pity. Because our deal was either you pay me the money or I get the girl. I don't believe you ever intended parting with her, did you? Did you, Martinson? I'll get you the money. Hold it! This is gonna be my pleasure. I'm gonna have to take this out of your hide. I'll win you the money. Just give me a chance. You're kind of lean. You don't have much meat on you, boy. <laughs> That's about two dollars worth. I've got a lot more to go before I settle up with you, Martinson. Get on your feet. On your feet! Get a whip of that air. Smell any different? No. Well, it should. You're free. How does it feel? It feels fine. I mean, it's wonderful. You're well rid of him. You must know that. Yes, I'm well rid of him. It's just that when he left, he looked so... I'd never seen him like that. He ran. And he's not a man who runs. Well, he figured to win. And he lost. And he lost you. It's bound to shake him up some. Perhaps. You're going to the auction with me, and after it's over, I'm going to take you back to Stockton. From there, I'm going to put you on a train to San Francisco. And then, from there, you can get passage home. Thank you. Thank you. Your man. He's a lousy welcher. Ha! No. Just, just leave me alone. It'll be all right in a minute. <coughs> like that two minutes. Oh, why did they do this to you? Why? Maybe because I'm lucky. Just call me Lucky Martins. That's not a joke, Barkley. And like Beamer, they kill better men than me for welching on gambling debts. So, uh, consider me lucky. Mr. Beamer, in San Francisco, that's when you lost money to him. And he said he would forget the money if you... Yeah, yeah, that's right. I couldn't give you up. Not to him. So that's why you wanted the money. You play a better game than I ever dreamed, Martinson. Thanks. But only winning counts. Listen, I'll take that hand now. I, I can make it all right now. Yes, I can take care of him. Thank you. That's what I figured. Away, Parkley. Go with him. No, I mean it, Barclay. One way or another, I pay my debts. Tell me, what should I do? Well, it's up to you to decide. You're free. But if it's him you want, you better get him before he falls down. 
You're a man with everything a girl would want. Martinson, he has nothing but me. Thank you very much for understanding. We're getting on the stage now, Mr. Martinson. Inside, gentlemen, the sale's starting. Uh, Mr. Gorman, I don't imagine you can manage the whole things up for a few minutes. I'm sure my brother will be... Sorry, gents, if it was up to me, but this is a government auction. All kinds of rules, and one of them is we gotta start on time. Well, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, look, we got a mine that's flooding out. We need that pump. Uh, we understand your problems, Mr. Gorman. Believe me, we do. But could you just hold the sale of the pump until last? I told you, this is a government auction. I gotta go by the catalog. Real sorry. Well, we tried. I guess we can just kiss that mine goodbye. Well, I'm gonna kiss that brother of ours. Oh, am I gonna kiss him? Well, here comes your chance. Peace. Now, not that we were getting worried, but another couple of minutes, and where have you been? Oh, the stage broke down. Oh, that's very interesting. Did you bring cash? Yeah. Honey, uh, Yeah. Did you have any trouble getting it? No, no trouble. Heath. Yeah, be right there. <laughs> 